my name is Tarsenik Kuznetsov. I work here in Samsung AI Center. And today I'll talk about variational inference for reinforcement learning and partially observable market decision, decision processes. Uh, firstly, uh, I'll remem uh, remember you about the talk that was given uh, about half a year ago by Pavel Shechikov, who was, uh, was talking about uh, particle filters for uh, cases when we know dynamics and we and all variational cases. So um, then I will talk about uh, DVRL, uh, deep variational reinforcement learning for PNDP. It's a uh, uh, paper that we are based uh, our research on. And then I will talk about our model that combine uh, variational inference for control and for state inference. Uh, first, uh, uh, let's look at what a state space model is. It's a, a hidden underlying Markov process on states, and we don't have access to the states, we have access only to some observations. Um, and our goal here is to perform filtering to estimate uh, posterior or states given all observation or to estimate probability of observed values. And uh, what can we do in such case? <clears throat> One way to, uh, to solve this problem is uh, sequential Monte Carlo procedure. Uh, it's not um, main, the main part of my topic, but uh, so I shortly remember what it's what it about. Uh, first, we uh, we have some proposal uh, that can generate, generate uh, our state and we await the state so they uh, reflect what our posterior is. So at the first time we sample n particles from our proposal and we compute weights uh, that is basically uh, Important sampling weights, we uh, renorm renormalize them, and then. Uh, and what is uh, P of S1? Uh, so Q of S1 is our proposal, and P of S1? Uh, P of S1 is some prior own states that we, at this point, we think we know. Uh -huh. And it's assumed that uh, proposal. It's not the same as as, as, as our prior, right? Mm, not not well, necessarily. necessarily. Mm -hmm. But it can be yes. Um, so uh, next steps we uh, sample new. We continue our trajectories. In the next step, we uh, sample ancestor indices <laughs> from um, from these weights that we have from previous step. So these weights indicate uh, how each particle is probable or unprobable as a posterior given our observation. So we sample ancestors, we sample n for each trajectory sample next step from proposal and we reweight these particles <coughs> the same way that we await them in the first place. And it goes um, until the end of the trajectory. Can you yeah. say a bit more about the second step? Um, <coughs> sample of particles. There is no second. The second second. <laughs> second, second. Yeah. second, second. How do um, you use you? Um, so at the previous moment we have n particles mm -hmm. and we have n weights that are non-uniform and this distribution is actually uh, weighted or weighted sum of some deltas that is approximation of our posterior distribution on states. Mm -hmm. So we sample from these weights, we actually sum no, actually we sample from this approximate posterior. So we decide which direction which trajectory should we continue? Yes. Yes. Uh, is it true that at each step we have n particles? Like n, yeah, n trajectories. At each step, we have n particles, and uh, 
when we move to the next, some particles may die, some particles mm -hmm. may break. What is Q or this conditional Q? Uh, this conditional Q is just some proposal. Mm -hmm. some oh. okay. uh, why do we condition the whole sequence of states from 1 to T minus 1? Why not just condition for the previous state? Uh, just completely. You can condition on whatever you want. <laughs> but it's like but no, if, if it's smart process, yeah. then it sounds a bit unreasonable to condition the whole process. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Usually you condition only on the last one and make your own observation. So I think the difference is because like you can. Is it true that you can, like, uh, for one projector, you can do several uh, yeah, branches? Maybe well, that's uh, why we need this uh, condition from the whole projector, because otherwise you will, like, no, no, no. So here is a picture that uh, schematically show what is going on. At the first step, we have uh, n equal particles. Then we continue them and away. And uh, blue circles indicate the mass of each particle after rewaiting. Then we sample them, and the second row of yellow dots is the sampled particles. We see that some trajectories died, the leftmost two, for example, and the biggest one changed into, for example, three trajectories here. And then we uh, weigh them again and so on. So. And we generate uh, the particles at, at times at t using the proposal distribution here, right? Yeah. Should somehow uh, use the dynamics of your Markov process? I mean, in, in Q, you should use the, the probability of transitions. No, yeah, yeah, you can set your Q as spread. And as transition probability, of course we can. Yeah. But you, you, you can see the more general scheme, yeah. right? But the proposal distribution is not the same as transition probability. Uh, then the, uh, okay, the question is, uh, what is the black, the black plot? Is it just likelihood or is it something else? Or is it uh, likelihood times transition probability divided by proposal probability? Yes, it's a likelihood observ observation mm. multiplied by uh, Probability of transition divided by proposal. Yeah. Okay. So, and when we reach the final step, we will have um, we will have some estimate of our normalization constant, and uh, you can get uh, samples from posterior distribution. So let's consider a variation case where when we don't know uh, our dynamics and we want to learn proposal as well. And this general distribution just shows the same process we talked about right before. And a uh, paper about variational sequential Monte Carlo just shows that uh, expectation over this distribution of our normalization constant is a lower bound on uh, marginal log likelihood of our observations. So, so basically, <laughs> uh, what conclusion should we get here? Uh, that we can use the same uh, same scheme as the previous, but also in case when we don't know the dynamics. When we learn dynamics, we can learn the proposal, we can maximize lower bound on of all observations. And the, like, the name is Q, yes? No, the name is The name is given by theta, I guess. Yeah. Oh. It's P theta, yes. And we observe only O. <coughs> and S are our hidden states. So what is theta? The theta is a parameter of our transition model and our emission model. Something we do not know? 
yes, and we meet a problem, we learn. This is like approximation of how our knowledge about it. We have very stupid question. Why should we get the Q? We will have some we examples can, later. We can yeah? substitute uh, underlying real state space by, uh, for example, uh, RM, and Q will be some Gaussian protocol. But we don't, we train it, or we don't train it, or... We, we train it. No, we train it in, in the sense that, like we train for uh, variational posterior for variational alpha protein color to be more <coughs> efficient. Okay. To, to be conditioned on observation. Okay. Uh, what is the physical sense of phi tilt? Uh, to the file is just the whole process that I have described. Just well, it is, is it distribution? Yeah, it's distribution. I mean, um, we sample at the first moment with the leftmost bracket. At the uh, first moment, we sample uh, some particles from our proposal. Then, uh, in the next steps, we weight them, we sample from weights, and we sample from proposal uh, given to use. So shouldn't it be over T from one to But our initial model doesn't involve uh, U variables, right? U? U. Shouldn't, shouldn't the first... No, no U, it's uh, ancestor indices. And so what? Ah, so... Uh, Okay, so first of all, you, you, you established uh, particle fields, huh? right? Yeah. Where you have uh, these two variables. And then for the, for the model of particle fields, you are using variational inference. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the first bracket, you should have uh, T from 1 to, T cap to, to the capital T, not I from 1 to M. There is no... No, T to M. Uh, yes, yeah. but in the second bracket, uh, like in the second product, you have t starting from two, and there is so in the whole product there is no term but defining distribution over the. No. Okay, well. I... No, okay, and. Um, it seems to be correct. Yeah, uh, I was mistaken. Mm -hmm. It seems you should give some assumptions on possible transition probabilities, Q, and other stuff. You can't just take arbitrary things everywhere here. Otherwise, you can't efficiently calculate. And at the final moment, we sample one of them according to important sampling weights. And we consider this sample as a sample from a variational posterior. So for this variational posterior, this lower bound will be lower bound on elbow. So it is a lower bound for elbow for having close to one? No, I mean, if we consider uh, n minus one trajectories like auxiliary, mm -hmm. and only a single sample one is uh, actually our sample. Well, it, it can be just uh, an elbow itself for any uh, proposal because elbow uses only one sample. Here you have many samples. So if you were to actually consider uh, procedure that uses this whole joint and then samples one sample from that by, for example, taking a sample proportional to its elbow, uh, then that would be a distribution. You could theoretically use in elbow, but the problem is that you don't, you don't know how to compute this uh, distribution. 
So uh, you essentially you kind of use that, but since the elbow would be intractable, you give a lower bound on the elbow, which is uh, sort of another evidence lower bound. Am I right that under the logarithm you have something like a normalization constant for each time step? This is W small is uh, unnormalized probabilities. Yes. Okay. So, the takeaway from this part is we have a particle filter. Particle computer can uh, estimate posterior and we can be learned in a rational way. Uh, okay, the two parameters here are theta and lambda, right? Yes. Uh, so for lambda, for example, if we fix Q to say goes in distribution, we can do a reprogrammatization trick, right? Yes, yes. And use uh, double stochastic relation, well, stochastic relation inference. Yeah, um, uh, usually we disregard uh, gradients in, uh, that goes from uh, discrete something. Well, th that's so exactly what I was going to ask. So, yeah. And uh, usually they add variance and uh, worse, worsen the result. And in this paper, others uh, just discuss these gradients. And so actually the, the gradients and stochastic relation inference are biased yes. in this procedure. But somehow it, 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 it learns. Somehow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the complexity of the whole thing? Is that t times n, or are there squares appearing anywhere? Mm, probably t times n. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, now I will talk about DRL. It's a uh, model that combines uh, adventure sector critic. It's, uh, Reinforcement learning method for <coughs> Markov decision processes and particle filter. Uh, at first, let's look at usual MDP. We have additionally uh, some action space. Our uh, transition now depends on action. We have reward distribution and discount factor that uh, defines our returns basically. Our return. GT is a discounted sum of all rewards into the future until the end of the episode. And some other usual denotations, for example, uh, value function for policy pi uh, of S is the uh, expectation over our policy, so how we play the game, of our returns given the state that the start is S. And Q function for pi. Uh, Q S and A is same expectation, but our first action is A. And uh, now I'll just uh, tell you about how advantage advantage factor treaty works. Uh, here we have sample estimate for our Q function. Actually, uh, I didn't get them, uh, a bit back. We unroll our environment. We have n environments. We unroll each other for n steps, other n s steps, and we at this moment have rewards, and we <coughs> approximate uh, at each step our key function as a discounted sum of reward from the future and a tail of uh, this. Uh, Sum is approximated by a value function. Um, <coughs> we define advantage as p function minus f, uh, value function. It's uh, just uh, action independent, independent baseline to reduce gradient variance. And first loss that we optimize is uh, basically a policy gradient loss on this advantage. Next, we uh, optimize value loss, which is MSC loss between Q and V. And we want V to uh, the expectation of the policy of our Q function. Uh, what is theta? V eta. You index V with eta. 
it just depends on the parameterized neural network by the mm -hmm. parameters. And look, pi comes from reinforce? And the last term is uh, entropy loss. We want uh, our policy to have high entropy. It helps with exploration and prevents us to premature finishing of optimization. And we can say that it will smoothen our landscape of our optimizing function. So it's um, just a method for reinforcement learning in a fully observable case. To use it in partially observable case, we need to think something up. And authors of DVRL uh, use particle filter to estimate underlying states. So let's talk about it. Um, in partially observable case. Oh, I'm sorry. So you, you showed the previous slide. Yes. Uh, should the term uh, forces our value function, which is learnable, to be actual value function in the second one? Um, and the second to the left, third to the bottom. Yes, second. The second one to the bottom. So we're trying to make advantage the smallest as possible. Smallest it's just simply minimizing the auto. Uh, Loss, the squared loss for the uh, value function estimate. So, if our uh, our policy is optimal, then the value function should. Uh, well, the value optimal. function is not depend on the policy. So, uh, if your value function is optimal, then on average. Uh, this value function would be equal to q. So, so the squared loss is minimized when what you are minimizing is equal to the mean of the other thing. So it will be minimal where the, v is e, the, uh, the value function is equal to the mean of q function. Uh, mean with respect to the policy. Uh, with respect to whatever, where, where, wherever the okay. samples are coming from. Okay. Samples are coming from by Oh. Here we don't see, but actually some of the states are hidden and some of them seem to I can say that uh, we observe everything but the states st and st plus 1. So the value function is with respect to the policy, oh. not the optimal value function. No, it's not restarted, it's VP. It's VP, okay. Why do we need this error of convection to the observation? Is it from action to observation? Um, you, you can argue that uh, observation actually also depends on action. For example, you can rotate your camera somewhere. Mm, okay. So, <coughs> here basic idea, we use particle filter to estimate our state and we, then we apply Advantages, uh, advantage of the critic to all the states that we get. Uh, this uh, process is basically the same as I described already about particle filtering. Uh, <coughs> there is two differences. Uh, the URL uses two part state representation. Uh, ST consists of two parts, HT and ZT. HT is uh, deterministic. Just, just, just to make it clear, so uh, the, uh, the, vanilla uh, a, yeah. the vanilla A to C uh, works when you have a fully observable market decision process and this <coughs> one VRL is for partial observable. Yes. Okay. So the VRL uses particle filter to estimate the underlying true state that we are in and just put it this estimation into a to C. HT is deterministic part that uh, comes from a recurrent neural network and ZT is uh, stochastic part 
that comes from proposal. That so these parts uh, serve different purposes. HT, uh, we need them to have non stochastic, less varied uh, gradients to the time. And ZT, we need to have some stochasticity actually uh, apply particle filter. You can see this process as uh, uh, some kind of uh, variational recurrent neural network when you have uh, multiple trajectories inside this network at once. This is something like you have these layers. Uh, the, the final layer is uh, um, returning parameters of uh, Gaussian. No, no. The, here, HT is just a value that well, returns yeah. from. What do you mean when you say you have several trajectories in one empirical network? Oh, it, so, uh, me and my colleagues, we uh, we are thinking about what actually uh, works under the hood. I mean, uh, how how well the model behaves itself, and how. No, according to this. When you explain where also. are the several trajectories, like so we have several particles, and uh, yeah, the lasers sometimes cross, um, kind of cross their paths. Particles are Z here. Yep. Z and um, H. Z K. Z K. And yeah. H two. Okay. So particles are combined. You know, you got two particles. Particles mm -hmm. just. One part is stochastic and generated from yeah. Gaussian, and the second one is generated from Don't we need so to include in our conditional, our previous set? No, we can argue that we have uh, integrated our previous Z into H. Mm -hmm. So, in practice, this uh, model shows not so very good behavior because uh, that team actually don't very very hard uh, depend on the gears and often they are just standard normal or as we initialize them and um, so they don't keep any information about observations yeah and uh, my thoughts is that well, maybe there is a, a process when uh, that K just add some noise into the process and uh, actually we have uh, the same uh, this one neural network that works with noise and we have uh, several examples of, of trajectories and just in case of uh, one trajectory in usual recurrent neural network, uh, one mistake would be crucial. And if we uh, some at some point in time we will, uh, we will produce wrong uh, output, uh, the next step steps will be affected. And uh, in this process, we have several trajectories and they can restore each other. Well, but uh, we hope that this one swipe will swipe. Yes, uh, so we have a nice here. Well, I have a question about actions. It seems yes. that you need to know all the actions through all the trajectory, and you are not able to update in 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 Kudonian manner by just one time step. Or is it possible to do this? No, we think point? about. Uh, uh, Recount neural network as uh, integrator means it takes all the previous experience HT minus one and adds uh, current particles, the stoch stochastic part, action, observation, and now it has all the knowledge about the whole history again. So we can say that HT uh, have all the actions that were made. So the time Yes.
Yes, but to, in practice, uh, do you update the parameters using only one time step or using the whole trajectory of actions? Uh, in practice, we use uh, here is written so we <laughs> It depends on t, and t comes from 1 to t big. Ah, no, Do you use we a... We un unroll uh, trajectories for some number of steps, for example 5, and we uh, compute all the losses on these 5 steps, and uh, optimize them simultaneously, and then we move to the next 5 steps. Mm -hmm. that uh, we just use another Ricard neural network to uh, integrate <laughs> yes, yes. to integrate the whole set of particles with corresponding weights into one state and this is the state that we use as uh, our observed state in Markov series process. Uh, wait, but here ST is not the same as just a uh, tuple HTZT. No. This is something different. No, this is what what goes into advantage of the critic. Mm -hmm. It's like the output of the whole uh, process. And we're using just point estimate, not the distribution. Here, here, yes, no. Or it, 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 it somehow contains stochasticity because Z. No, it does not contain. It doesn't so contain. It. So <coughs> your trained policy from A to C eats this S, yes? Yes. And. Uh, you use it to produce these trajectories, or you use previous, uh, like, uh, you need to use some policy to uh, generate actions. Yes. yes. And you use this policy condition on this uh, computer uh, test. Yes. And why don't you use uh, S hat t minus 1 also in your kind of neural network? Won't it be useful? Well, it's not, not me, it's ultra soft. Okay. okay. And, and, um, you, you can expect that ST would be Markovian. And you can. No, you need only one time step. Yes, but that's exactly what I'm asking. But uh, I think the answer is they kind of do. I mean, ST are like outputs of a usual recurrent neural network. You feed all the, the those H and these are inputs, and then there is, in this in your current neural network, there is some hidden layer that sort of represents our decision at the S t minus 1, at the previous moment. And then there is just one uh, output layer that uh, generates us the actual S, but the hidden state is reused. Okay. Is, uh, I'm not sure you should understand. The hidden state from previous time step is used. Yeah. No. 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 no, I mean, you apply the. Uh, what I meant by. Is it recurrent with respect to like this. Uh, it's not recurrent in the time. It's, it's not recurrent in the time, it's recurrent yeah. just to process, for process the step. Ah, so process KK tables. Yes. Um, uh, then my question is still. still yeah. Why do you need a in well, mm. uh, I understand. It's it's easy, but, uh, I would I would suggest to use more explicit uh, dependence from the previous step steps okay. for the S hat. No. Yes. Uh, why from the previous Because uh, S hat is market process. Yes. We know that uh, S hat t is defined by S uh, hat t minus 1. And we already know S hat t minus 1. Why not using it uh, in our attempt to predict, uh, to get the best prediction for S hat t? Ah, you mean uh, to put S hat t minus 1 into, into this new error? Yeah. <laughs> Then also there is a question, why use a recurrent neural network here? 
because there is no meaningful order on these k samples, right? Uh, ideally, you would want to use a network that is invariant to any permutation of this set, the set level network, right? Yes. It should be. Uh, you can. You should use it with different k capital. So, uh, do we change k capital p? I mean, it is fixed through the whole process. Uh, is it? It seems to be very strange if you will not be able to use your network with different key, keys. Well, yeah, okay. I'm, not, I'm not suggesting to use some feed-forward network where you just concatenate it or everything. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that maybe you should look at the transformer-like architectures. They are set level in the sense that they allow for inputs of variable uh, size and they are invariant to any permutation of the input. Unless you add positional coding to that is. Okay, yes, uh, yeah. we, we have started uh, to make some uh, suggestions for improvement of the, of the model. Uh, what's important is that now it became more or less clear what's going on with this particular model. Let's proceed. And, uh, well, complete loss for this model will be uh, consists of four parts. It's uh, our policy gradient loss, our entropy loss, uh, value function loss, and all bound on marginal clock like So, um, and all these losses were defined many slides ago. Now we will only guess what do they mean. And you do a broad search? For tuning all the parameters, then um, I don't know what after what was the well. What else can you do? <laughs> Bayesian optimization. <laughs> you can optimize that. No, maybe the heavy wall found. Through that's that's the uh, uh, can you that's briefly that's comment uh, the the physical yeah. sense of which of the items? Okay. In L, in the real. Uh, so we. Uh, the first one is uh, policy gradient loss. It uh, trains our policy to <coughs> The second one is, uh, encourages our policy to have high entropy. The third one is trains the value function. Okay, where are we speaking? At the same time as the. Uh, Never interested. <laughs> Sorry. Well, please do it less loudly. And our value function is used in our policy gradient loss. And the fourth one is our uh, lower bound. And we use, we train, <coughs> we optimize this loss to have uh, particle filter estimates on our state to use everywhere. So, any questions? Well, let's go forward. Okay. <laughs> is it crucial to use A to C? Or no. can you? Okay. Uh, no, for, um, in terms of uh, to use some off policy methods, you have to have some kind of recurrent replay buffer mm -hmm. that have not only. Uh, uh, state action, like state we want, but some chunks of trajectories. So, next I'm going to talk about our model uh, for it, the joint reward optimization and relief tracking. So, the main idea is to try and combine um, <coughs> variational inference in MDP that I have not talked yet about. It's <laughs> Next slides and uh, particle filtering inference in terms of states. So let's talk about variational inference in local decision processes. Um, it is um, just uh, one of viewpoints on how to train agent and uh, what we want from it. So uh, let's say we have. Additionally, some prior over actions. Yeah. Uh, and we infer uh, states and actions here. 
Also, we have additional software variable, uh, calligraphical O, that means that uh, our action was optimal in some sense, and uh, probability of this optimality proportional to exponent of reward. So basically it means the higher reward we get, the more optimal we think we are. So and uh, we want to infer posterior on actions given optimality. Uh, it may seem like a strange choice to, <coughs> to set uh, probability, but later uh, I'll show that it's quite okay. Um, so we have uh, trajectories, it's all states and actions that we have in our episode. We have prior trajectory with respect to policy new, so we have prior actions, and uh, the rest of the prior is uh, the true ground true probabilities of transitions in our environment. Our variation posterior uh, actually consists of two parts. Two. The first one is also ground true transition probabilities of our environment, and the second one is our optimizing policy B, Y. So it's policy Y that we want to learn. And likelihood of optimality given trajectory is just a product of uh, exponents of rewards. Here we think now that uh, reward is deterministic, and uh, so we just uh, integrate over rewards, and rewards is just a function. We say that optimality proportional to exponent of some of rewards, and. Um, Yes. Yes. Is it usual that we know this goal probability of transition from one state to another? Do we know you, them? You, you, you don't know them, and you don't need to. All of them will uh, disappear in the probability of divergence between P and Q. Okay. So, <coughs> much more like a likelihood of optimality, we can uh, bound it from below and uh, actually our bound will have following shape. It is uh, expectation over Q of Z. Q of Z is just how we play our game. So Q consists of samples from environment and samples from Y. And uh, we, uh, we take expectation of our reward minus k divergence of pi and m plus some constant yeah. mm -hmm. um, so if we uh, take in from prior uh, we'll get uh, lower bound in more simple terms uh, our current divergence changes to entropy of our policy and uh, let's what do we see here? We maximizing uh, sum of our reward plus entropy of policy and uh, we expect over our policy. So it's just an uh, almost usual reinforcement learning target, but we add some entropy through the whole trajectory because in the uh, previous variant uh, A to C, we also have entropy, but it, uh, it impacts only one moment of the time. So we the moment t, and we maximize entropy as the moment t. And in this uh, setting, we will maximize entropy in the future. So the moment t, we will take that action that maximizes uh, entropy in the future. And it is... Uh, Maximum entropy objective. It is <coughs> optimized in, in algorithms such as soft actor critic and soft learning. Uh, soft actor critic is a state of the art so far on continuous control, and uh, it is some coefficients. Some coefficient has good scores. It is insensitive to hyperparameter uh, exchange, and 
actually why does it work so well? Uh, one, re one reason is that uh, it tries to find multiple uh, ways to solve a task or because it wants high entropy, it, uh, it encourages multimodal policies. So if algorithm have multiple ways to solve a task, it will use uh, all of them uh, from time to time. And one, then, uh, one way will be blocked somehow. So algorithm will st still can use the rest of, of the actions. But this is true only for environments with uh, uh, discrete action modes, right? Mm -hmm. How do you model these model distributions in continuous action spaces? Something like energy-based models, you cannot exactly compute. Yeah, but you need to define these uh, policies. Like, if in, in this approach, you would define the policy yourself, right? There is a policy network. So you need to go some extra length to define a policy that is capable of multimodality. Yes. Uh, and in software critical approximate your good policy like Gaussian and in software modeling you're trying to sample from this energy based distribution. Uh -huh, okay. But so uh, the soft in the soft after critic uh, after critic can you do multimodality? Only in soft yeah, in, in visual setting yes you okay. can you can but in soft you do in fact you can. But maybe you can learn something like Mixture of Yeah, but you, uh, you have to define it. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, uh, second reason is it finds conservative and safe solutions from robust to uh, external effects. Oh, example. No, I mean uh, it won't. Uh, it gets such parts of trajectory when optimal policy ha has high entropy. For example, it. Uh, does some action and for the several next time steps it, uh, optimal actions are almost uniform it can do whatever it wants uh, agent and it won't screw up but actually none of these effects it is measured so uh, it's only theory yeah. yes no you, you, can, you, you can watch some some cartoons of agent action taking and you can think you can think, think, it. think up something uh, so uh, let's transfer this uh, various variance of control to the partial availability let's denote uh, our current observation at the moment t xt it includes our reward, our optimality and our observation and all the history we denote as gt so construct, construct a simple variation of lower bound or marginal of likelihood at the moment t uh, at the second line uh, here is some expectation over ST. Spoiler, it is uh, particle filter. <laughs> uh, it samples uh, states from our posterior at the moment. And then uh, everything depends only on the state. Uh, and then we sample uh, action and New state for all our <coughs> our PPs in relation to posterior. Can I be So, uh, in the previous slide, so, uh, our policy was constructed with, uh, with with the true behavior of the model as the condition as the minimum and so on. And, this, and in this one, uh, we have some surrogate model Q. That behaves differently. Okay. No, no, here, here we uh, um, this expectation of ST is not from the Q. It is from posterior, from the Q, but we related and the sample. So, uh, 
for our purposes, we can say that it is from uh, actual posterior epithelium of states, given our observation. What is the profit of doing this? So, uh, ah, so uh, sometimes we cannot, uh, if, you, if we subst substitute Q with B, this part, that is B, then uh, we, can, we can compute a compute probability. Uh, of the, of the uh, I think that we'll, we'll, uh, we have the here here and Q and Pi and we buy this uh, variational posterior corrections and Q for states. No. So it's 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 um, quite bad notation here. It says that uh, AT and the ST plus one was generated from Q, although AT was generated from Pi and the ST plus one was generated from Q. Yeah, no. So the, in, in denominator, there's a distribution with respect to which we compute expectation. Yes, yes. Mm. Just Did you have the transition probabilities in Pi? No? No? In, in some... <laughs> can you go like two slides ago? One more? And one more? Yeah. Uh, no. But we have it in Q. Yes, but this is a different Q. Oh, they're, they're different Q. Uh, yes. Yes, it's different Q. Uh, so this Q in terms of variational sequential Monte Carlo is Q from particle field. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, so, in this algorithm, uh, your P of S T plus one given S T and A T just uh, uh, zero each other out. Zero each other out, yes, right. Uh, and in your algorithm you have this of P of S T plus one given S T and A T, <coughs> but you do not have uh, another term that will zero it out. So you have to know this P we, we, we don't want, have we it. Want, we with what? No, with neural networks. Uh, maybe like uh, point, point it out with this uh, neural network in your formula. I'm sorry, but like formulas are very different. Where is it here? It's a hero. So I, I try to uh, put it out because it uh, makes notation. Very complicated. Okay, but this is uh, somewhere in the denominator, right? Um, so, uh, numerator is modeled, it's factorized into uh, some reasonable pieces, and each piece is... And one, one of them and is this uh, P of ST plus 1 with... Uh, Given ST and the, AT. Yes. Okay. So this is like model-based, uh, yes? Yes. Okay, so. so we have actually neural network. For P, neural network for, for Pi, and neural network for Q. Q. Yes. That's it? You just three <laughs> neural networks? Okay, go ahead, please. <laughs> um, so we can uh, leverage our bound into four pieces, and it will give, our, give us more intuition about what's going on. So, first piece is well estimate of optimality in the future. It is like our value function. Uh, second one is our current reward. Uh, third one is k regularization or uh, entropy encouragement. Uh, and fourth one is uh, variation of the encoder on state. This is fun. So we, e each of these is a uh, zero model. Uh, I didn't really get the motivation of being this. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get the motivation of being this. My motivation was for the following. We wanted to... Uh, so we have uh, variation influence as control in the software, for example, and we have variation influence uh, for uh, particle filter in DRL, and we wanted to merge them so they can profit from each other. What is that with uh, the previous latest for, for this software degrading? What is that with software degrading? Software degrading works, works for, for uh, observable set. Ah, so this is the other than partial observable mm -hmm. Here. Yes. Which is partial observable Yes. Ah. 
So for one particle, our upward bound of these four parts that we can see some intuition in. Um, so we approximate future optimality of this value function and let's just add more particles here. <laughs> uh, we take by form of mixture of uh, particles from our posterior and uh, well function is uh, average of particles from our proposal because uh, our ST, ST plus 1 generated from Q uh, and here I can say that naive particle filter it uh, wants us to have uh, one action for each state so if you have, if you have n particles you have uh, n weighted states and you have uh, n actions for each state because n actions, actions or one action for, for each of n particles one action for each mm -hmm. state and uh, we can put only one action into our environment uh, and so we utilize the same we should should the same as well. Why do we put only one action in our environment? Yeah. Uh, so the logic is we, we, we can think about where we, we can be in terms of particle filter. So we have some distribution of states, and uh, in each different state we can take different action. But we, uh, we, we can make only one action. In why? Why only one? Be because our environment. <laughs> oh, so it would be like because of the programming issues, or what? No, I mean, I mean you can you can branch maybe, so you, you can uh, make a setting where you can uh, branch in time. So you, you can uh, think what if I do one action in this state and what if I can do a second action in this state, but it's not not usual approach. But do we really need to uh, use our environment? We have like the base, the model of. Uh, yeah, that's really crazy. Uh, but we want to have observations. So, Why? if we use only our model, we can go away so far. Mm -hmm. After several steps, everything will be. I'm sorry, I still don't really understand. Why can't the branch, like, isn't, uh, why is it, isn't it a usual uh, approach? So, for example, take real world. We have a robot. And, 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 something. and what? Here you have, like, this, this branching procedure is not about real world. No, no you, but you can learn on permission from real world. Usually in variance you can do only one action. You can do two actions for two. So to do two actions at the same time you have to make parallel inverse to <laughs> Yeah. I mean someone who's running our simulation definitely does that. Uh, according to the multiverse interpretation, but we aren't able to do that story. Let's return to the topic of the talk, please. We'll discuss multiverse interpretation. <laughs> Explain the whole idea one more time before we go to the uh, We already like took two deep, uh, different things and uh, put them together. We you like you do it one more time very quickly and then we go to see. So first difficult thing is particle field, right? Uh, yes. So we uh, just do what we usually do with particle field. So we learn model, the, the model of the environment, we uh, learn um, proposal, we uh, rate our particles based on likelihood of our model, and at, at each step, step we have... We need particles because we don't have follow-up observer, observer, yes. 
Beat it. No. 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 No, we, if you have full durability, we don't need particles. Particles are sort of our beliefs about the two states. Yes, yes, yes. Particles is a belief state. But we cannot uh, integrate the constant, so we use approximation. Okay. Why can't we just run in advance a lot of environments? Uh, some of them may be real. Vehicle stuff, but uh, when we need to split or range, uh, we can uh, implement like, different actions. It will be at least exact uh, in comparison to C. Mm -hmm. Or it is very computational. Uh, I think we can, but it's not traditional approach to do it. So we took particle filter, we took uh, variation inferences control and just merged them together with the help of semi implicit various inference all the bound. It's just a um, technical thing. You say if we can see. <laughs> So, uh, is it true that we need a particle filter because we have unobservable variables and we need the second variation of him because we want our control to be more soft? Yes. Yeah. And to be working with uh, state filter. Uh. So, here we uh, just take uh, from our posterior n plus one another sample, one for uh, make an action and other other and samples to estimate probability of this action. So the difference is in the denominator in pi. We have now different probability. It's just technical thing to make our to keep our one over one. So now if we want to branch we need instead what? Just use one action. Yes, and don't we, we just use one action. Okay. And our the size of our batch may become smaller or not? The batch of particles we use. Uh, the batch becomes larger. But in practice we use the same, no, no, same particles. Usually it's the same, not? Like it's n, 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 no, n, uh, n. No, now you have uh, k particles to propagate through time and n particles, n plus one particle, n particles to estimate probability and one particle <laughs> to make an action. Uh, so you have n plus one, uh, k plus one plus n particle. Here you are trying to like uh, concatenate all your history in one state, like from all of your particles to make an action. What, what your s from 0 to n means? Uh, what is it actually? So, um, tilde means that it's a particle that goes to uh, action making an estimation. Mm -hmm. So we just sample them from posterior. It's the same kind of particles that propagate through time, just we don't propagate through time. Mm -hmm. uh, and one sample of this particles is a sample from our belief. So we, if we want to uh, act based on our belief, we take one sample and we uh, look what we do in this state. And our other particles is used to estimate the probability. Are there any theoretical issues preventing you from using my bound instead of the CV bound? Uh, yeah, tell me. That's the question for the discussion. I don't think so, but I think it's not the uh, main mean? point of your problem here. <laughs> we'll discuss it later. How do you use your method to solve it? So now we have a uh, semi implicit lower bound that encapsulates the three losses of the URL. And uh, the cumulative loss is. This semi-implicit lower bound plus uh, 
uh, where the function was. Because you still need where the function is. SI loss, we have like this entropy loss, uh, yes. advantage yes, yes. loss. Our SI loss in case of one particle splits into four pieces. Okay. Inside uh, SI loss, we have uh, four pieces, yeah. and first two are maximization of our reward and mm -hmm. reward in the future. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Regularization or entropy, and then <coughs> particle filtering from the state. Okay, and from these four, the value is the first one for the first one. What? Go to the slide. Value was? The previous one. What is SI and what is value was? So SI is. Uh, in, yeah, and value was? Value was the same value was as the value of. It is like when we had uh, value loss, entropy loss, yes. and uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah. It is the same loss as that. But the number of hyperparameters became three times less. Uh, is it? Or do we have all these hyperparameters in uh, loss SI? No? The loss SI is defined here. No hyperparameters so far. Okay. <coughs> yeah, but we use. We use what? Hyperparameters? Hyperparameters to. Where are we? To balance parts of the source. Mm -hmm. uh, inside this LSI. So this LSI <coughs> also splits, we can split into uh, a reward plus value function. Uh, encoding for it. Quick recap what just happened here. Um, we do particle filtering and uh, very simple in optimal control to merge them, them together in hopes that it will improve both. Uh, we uh, we have theoretically grounded verification in terms of what we sample from our posterior and sample extra from that. We don't use this uh, kind of method to aggregate our particles. Uh, we show that this three separate neural losses can be viewed as one joint. And from particle viewpoint, we added the reward block likelihood into a particle filtering. So now uh, reward is uh, just another not just, but also another variant of conservation. And it helps with uh, particle filtering. So, some experiments. Um, first is a uh, mountain hiking environment. It is a simple two dimensional environment uh, where agent travels in space, uh, can go whatever it wants, but its action clipped. Uh, we have observation noise here, we have friction noise, uh, and our reward is defined by these uh, hills of orbital. So the higher the better? Yes, the higher the better. Um, and the reward is the, uh, just a function of coordinates where it's, the agent is at the time. And uh, this is some examples of how an agent behaves. And these red dots are actually observations. So and observations are the estimates of the scan precision. Uh, and uh, no, observation. <laughs> observation. To make estimates, we need to train another uh, neural network that will map from hidden states into a real one. Well, again, the, the dots are what? Dots are observations. Observations. And, and what they show? The trajectory is a real trajectory. Yeah. But the dots show the approximate position of the agent. But very noisy. Yes, very noisy. Yeah. And the actions are continuous, so it's good. Actions continue. Um, and on this environment, our method shows significant improvement over DRL. 
And uh, here, actually, there are two variants of this method. Uh, orbit R, it's what I have described. And orbit B, uh, in this case, mu is not uniform and exponentially averaged of B. So we wanted to make some kind of TRPO variant of our method, where policy is regularized by the previous policies and uh, cannot go too far from what it was in the user past. Um, so improvement mainly based on that we have reward in our filtering now, because reward is uh, just a function of our coordinates and it helps greatly to learn where we are located now. Uh, second line. Have you analyzed why you have such a uh, bad peaks on the end of orbit B? It's no, it's on policy method. It has been players from the box, but um, we didn't make point exactly what causes this spikes. Maybe your policy is uh, changing very fast and they are uh, averaging. I'll see, which ID? Probably, but we have some implementation problems. So it may be our, just our hands. And the second set of environments that we tested our method on is filtering Atari. Filtering Atari is like usual Atari, but uh, due to inherent uh, partial observability of our uh, ability to handle partial observability of our methods, we use one frame at a time. Uh, usually, uh, methods use four state frames and half of the frames are blacked out mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they are blacked out with probability of 50% so approximately half of the frames is black and on this set of environments our method don't show uh, great improvement of the material so, Probably it's because uh, this setup doesn't have such strong connection between the reward and the state you're located in terms of uh, the current reward and this pass also it cannot help us to uh, understand better what was behind the black screen. Maybe use blocking instead of like just using one uh image at a time, not for, or use like, motion noise on images? No, it's a baseline. No. Very strange, actually. Why it work? It should work very well. So, is it really important to use all these four uh, time steps, previous time steps, to So, original paper DPM uh, was arguing yes. that uh, actually Atari is not mm. a program appropriate for Order 1. So, uh, they said that four frames should give uh, They said that Markovian property uh, at maximum four, so four frames could be okay. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. That was on the last slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so any questions? Of course, you all the questions have been asked yeah, during the talk. Uh, then let us thank the speaker.